Gary, welcome back to Sweden. It's, Thank you very much. It's great to see you here again. Yeah, you've been here like three, four times. This is my third visit, yes. Oh, great, great. So I hear that you, um, you're giving uh, a program about uh, customer relations, human element in customer yes, relations. Yes, we are, yes. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Well, I'm happy to. It turns out to be one of my favorite topics. Great, great. Um, some time ago, Judy Bell and I had the idea of combining FIRO theory mm -hmm. with what we know about how customers make decisions about, uh, about uh, making purchases. And it turned out to be just a, a beautiful fit. And Will Schutz, who was the developer of FIRO theory and the human element, was especially pleased that we were applying his work in that way to the area of uh, customer relations. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of uh, uh, people in Sweden knowing about FIRO, so that uh, can really be extra interesting, I think. Oh, that's good. Yeah, That's yeah. very good. Yeah. Well, if I could say something, the, the approach that we're using is really quite simple. Um, and where we generally think that most people like to believe that we make decisions about who we're going to do business with very logically and rationally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. turns out not to be the case. When you look at it, uh, if you do some research, there's no evidence to show that our decisions are made with uh, absolute logic and razor sharp analysis of cost benefit analysis. Turns out almost all decisions are made, uh, if not completely emotionally, certainly all of our decisions are at least informed by our emotions. Mm -hmm. And when you think about customers, it just turns out that customers like to do business where they feel good. If you begin to talk to them, customers will begin to say things like, uh, I'm willing to drive uh, across town to places that are less convenient, wait uh, longer for service, and in many cases even pay more to do business where they feel good. So what does feel good mean? Well, th th that's, that's uh, part of the issue. I mean, that's a great question. We were wondering, uh -huh. so what's going on there? Um, in the, in, if you think of it in terms of uh, Will Schutz's FIRO theory, uh, the feelings that are involved are uh, people feel significant or not, people feel competent or not, and people feel likable or not to some degree. Those are the things that we're always dealing with. So when people come to uh, look for who am I going to be in business with, they are naturally drawn to places where they feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. So the issue is, again, thinking of uh, FIRO theory, it has to do with customer self-esteem. So we thought if we can begin to apply that for companies, if we, if we get companies thinking about how can I begin to create conditions where customers feel very significant and very competent and very likable when they're doing business with us, that'd probably be a good thing. And it turns out we believe that's where real uh, brand loyalty comes from. So if I'm a business person and uh, my customer just leaves an interaction. What I want that customer to be thinking and feeling is the uh, customer walks away thinking, oh, that was a really smart decision I made mm -hmm. to do business with that company. They're thinking, uh, they treat me like I'm an important person. Feels like they actually like me. It's a warm and friendly mm -hmm. environment. I, just, I was just really smart mm -hmm. to do business that way. So that's a, that's a bit... Um that's a bit deeper, I think, than uh, uh, normally when we talk about customer service program and uh, how to dress and uh, how to behave. And yes. Uh, yes. Well, uh, uh, I was doing customer service training in the uh, years before I met Will Schutz and mm -hmm. uh, became familiar with the deeper theories. And I, too, was using that traditional approach. And uh, basically, we'd tell people to smile a lot. and respect people and be friendly and all of those things are fine the problem is we bring people in and train them and then they go back to their job and nothing changes because it doesn't stick it's mm -hmm. not deep mm -hmm. enough uh, for them to really get it 
So the approach we're using now is much more of an inside out approach where we begin to talk about uh, things from an emotional point of view and then that's where we begin to see some real changes. I might also say one of the other uh, differences I think that, that makes our approach unique is that we're paying attention to where the system uh, breaks down or where all of the training flies out the window. And that's usually when a customer service provider becomes defensive in trying to work with a, a customer. So if we think about it, we can predict that eventually we're going to encounter customers who are illogical, uh, irrational, they're demanding, uh, and they become very difficult to deal with. And those are times when, as a provider, I can often get hooked into a mm -hmm. battle with them. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I, I'm not trying to provide them a service so much as we're in competition and it's mm -hmm. about me not wanting to lose face. And that's really disastrous mm -hmm. in terms of uh, providing uh, good customer relations. So in, when, when we're working with people, we tend to pay attention to that. We try to uh, help people understand where the defenses come from, why we get triggered, and help them plan in advance how not to get triggered in that way. So what happens if I uh, don't feel significant or competent or even liked uh, as a customer? You're probably going to take your business elsewhere. Do you have some data about uh, efficiency of the program and so on? Well, it's, it's a good question that you ask. And uh, a lot of people want to know, why does it even matter? Uh, you know, what's it going to do me to, mm -hmm. uh, to do any kind of customer relations training? The data is actually pretty clear on that. Turns out if the, your company has a reputation for providing quality service, you wind up beating your competitors in almost every category that we can measure. So, for instance, uh, sales growth goes, uh, grows at about 11% higher if you have a, a, good uh -huh. sales a good service reputation yeah. uh, over a company that does not. You grow your market share about 8% faster and profitability goes up 9% uh, faster. And these are not statistics that I'm just pulling out of a hat or, or even that we try to capture. We're getting these from the uh, Strategic Planning Institute in Cambridge, Massachusetts that monitors these sorts of things. So we believe the data is pretty good. Um. How about end users of this material? And uh, they will, of course, ask, how can I be sure that this uh, human element of customer relations really works? Well, that's a great question, and, and you're right. Uh, everybody wants to know that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we continue to get very good uh, results with this program. We've gotten particularly good data out of the healthcare sector. Um, as healthcare is a particularly uh, unique area of customer service. They don't like to call it customer mm -hmm. service, they call it patient satisfaction. But the principles are all the same. So we worked with a large cancer center on the east coast in the U.S. Uh, we trained a fair number of their people. What was uh, wonderful about that project was uh, this healthcare system measures patient care data monthly using an outside source. So we've got a long track record of data. We could pinpoint exactly when we began to use our approach. And the patient satisfaction uh, numbers uh, jumped up immediately. And what was most gratifying is that we can now look back over a three year period and it's still at a very high level. So it validated our belief that by using an inside-out approach, we can get real and sustained change mm -hmm. in a way that just talking about behavior doesn't really achieve. Yeah. Are there any more uh, sectors or companies that you can give us an example? Well, my colleague Judy Bell has done a fair amount of work in, uh, in the hotel industry, and uh, we have great results there. We got a lot of anecdotal uh, information back about how it really makes a difference in the way that uh, customers are treated, but even more importantly, when we measure how the customers feel about how they're being treated. And I think that's the, that's the real bottom line. Mm -hmm. Someone told me that it's, uh, 
it's used a lot in France too. France has been using the program uh, for a number of years now, five or six years. We have uh, several people over there who are uh, actively uh, using the program, yes. Mm -hmm. So how long do you have to, uh, normally those programs are like half a day, one day? Well, our program is three days. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, we think that the shorter versions, the traditional approaches, uh, don't really achieve the kind of results that we can achieve. So we're asking people to make a commitment up front. If we really want to change uh, the way that people are doing business with their customers, it takes a little time to, uh, to talk about that. But again, I think you get what you, you, get what you pay for. Now I will say in, when we work in healthcare, we do some abbreviated programs there. We're running two-day programs. Uh, uh, in hospitals and clinic situations, it's particularly difficult to shut down a clinic for more than a, a couple yeah, of days yeah. so that we can go mm -hmm. in and do training. Okay. Interesting. This is really how to create customers for life, isn't it? I think you're right. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Gary. Thank you.